great recipes start with Odlums. Proud sponsors of Catherine Layden on Ireland AM. Now we're continuing our Christmas baking series. Catherine's in the kitchen this morning and it's sure Christmas is. cake. Christmas cake. A simple Christmas cake. Very simple. Right. And to cut down a bit on the mixing, Alan, I've already creamed together my 175 grams, 6 ounces of butter or margarine mm -hmm. and 175 grams, 6 ounces of Muscovado sugar. Now you can use the light or the dark Muscovado, depending on how light or how dark you like the cake. Right. I use the light Muscovado here today. Now to that, we're going to add my four eggs, which I have just lightly beaten here, Alan, OK? So we're just going to gradually add the eggs. And I know you, uh, you make the pudding. A good few weeks before Christmas. Because a lot of people make the cake a good few weeks before Christmas as well. Some people have the cakes made for three or four months before Christmas. Really? Well, does it taste better if you, you leave it that long? What happens, Alan, is, in fact, that people who make them that early, they feed it with alcohol every three or four weeks. So they open it, pour in the whiskey and the brandy. Right, well, we'll talk when we're, when we're finished with this, okay? with that. Alan, that you have the... Forget this done now, then I can tell you what's important. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Now. That's done. now, that's better. Now, now the drill is stopped. We can talk. <laughs> now we can have a chat. <laughs> it's very important to have the butter or the margarine and the eggs at room temperature. If they're not, the mixture can curdle. And curdling can cause the fruit to sink in a fruit cake. Okay. So now I'm just going to add some. Now you were saying spices. that people make their their cakes and their puddings a couple of months ahead, <laughs> exactly. Now and you every don't couple of weeks add a little bit of alcohol to it. Alcohol to the um, to the cake. Yeah. It's called feeding the cake. Feeding the cake. Feeding the cake. Yep. Now, a little bit of whiskey here. Whiskey. A little bit of brandy. A little bit of brandy here. Yep. Now, what I've done there is I've just put my mixed spice, some nutmeg. A little bit of cinnamon, if you have it, mm -hmm. into the um, mixture with the flour. And we just stir that through before we finally add all the fruit. Now, even though I call it a simple Christmas cake, there's a fair bit of fruit in it, Alan. So you see how quickly it comes together? Yeah. So we just... And it's just dried yep. fruit that you have. That's all I have, yeah. So in there we just have the cream, butter and sugar, the eggs, four eggs, and the eight ounces, that's 225 grams of flour, with our cream plain flour, with our spices. Mm -hmm. Now to that I'm going to add, I was going to say the pith, the rind of the, the orange. We were the saying that earlier. Not the no, pith. not the pith. The pith. The pith. As we say. Now, to that I'm going to add 100 grams of ground almonds, which is just about a 200 oh, gram no, pack no, here. I wouldn't have realised almonds go in that. The almonds help to keep the cake moist. Oh, do they? Yes, okay. they do. Now there's some and there's chopped almonds here chopped as well. Almonds Are you putting there, them the in as well? The ground almonds in, yes. Throw them in there for Are you now. Are the whole lot of the chopped almonds? Yeah, 100 gram pack of chopped almonds. All right. What well, almond niblets I'm using. You could use the flaked almonds as well. There we have that done. I would have thought that would have given it a really almondy taste, but I never no. think of Christmas cakes as a, with don't. almond in it. No. no. See, it just spices, keeps it moist. The spice spices really take over at it. Now here we have the candied peel and the cherries. You can chop the cherries, but to be honest, there's nothing nicer than getting a whole, whole cherry, cherry in your slice of cake. Cut into your cake, mm. exactly. And finally, we're going to add about 500 grams of mixed dried fruit. This side here, will I put it in? Throw that in there to me. All of it? A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time, okay. Yeah. Now we're going to. Oh, you, want to be, you want to be fit to be doing this cake, stirring this I'm cake. Breathless. Look at you. I'm getting You're breathless. Getting out of breath there, stirring it. <laughs> <I am. laughs> uh, now, now, you can put less fruit in if you wish. If you want a lighter mixture, so I have plenty of lovely, luxurious dried fruit there. We just mix that, and but it looks like there's loads there. Loads in it, yeah. And now we're just going to transfer that when it's mixed into the prepared. Do you want a hand tin. there, love? Did you give that now, sir, for me. <laughs> give that an <laughs> stir. <laughs> My God, it's like stirring cement. Yeah, and that's why you see, like we mentioned with the pudding last week and the cake, give it, get everyone in the house to give it a mix. That's the way. Oh, you said that, yeah, and yes. everybody. He makes a wish. Yeah. You get every... a bit of a break, you see, by doing that. So you just transfer that into the tin. Yeah. Get all, get all the family around to help <laughs> make, and then you sort of say, it's your turn to stir and, and you make, a, make wish. a wish. Exactly. So make your Chris. My God. Do you, would you be worn out yeah. making this? <laughs> <laughs> that's what's like going to the gym. Part. Yeah. No. How would you know now. that's mixed? It's just you have no dry flour visible through. Oh, all right, no dry flour. Just mix. Yeah, no dry flour. Right down to the bottom. Okay, so you've so your tin here. That looks very put small. Put that into the 18 round cake tin. We'll leave it there because oh, no. we don't have time to oh, bake do we it. Not? 
No, to bake it. I know, but so you're going to put it in. One. Oh, you have it in. Okay. No. So you put you put this into your tin. Into your tin. Into the and oven. And you have it lined. Lined a piece of line. paper. And you can okay. get those individual liners just as well, Alan. Now, can I say at this stage that a lot of the fan ovens nowadays are inclined to be a little on the hot side? Yes. So I suggest to be on the safe side, give it a longer time at a lower temperature. Okay. And so I would it bake burn that for top. about. Um, about three to four hours at 120 degrees centigrade. So that was three or which four is hours. Quite, which is quite low, yeah. Then when you take the cake out of the oven, you let it go cold and then so you pour your whiskey over, over it. Yeah, you leave it in the tin overnight and then to store it. So have you poured your whiskey over and this? How much whiskey do you pour over it? Well, now, I have made in my recipe two tablespoons, mm -hmm. but I went a little bit over that. I'd say I have about a quarter pint of whiskey in there. A quarter of a pint? A quarter of a pint. Oh, there's oh, coming out. the whiskey coming out. <laughs> <laughs> there's whiskey everywhere. Whiskey all over the show. Now. Were you having a little um, taste yourself, Catherine? No. <laughs> I will tonight, though. Now. You will tonight. So you take it out of the tin. And you... Now, what I did, actually, I poured the whiskey over that this morning. Hence, it hasn't so quite so the cake. It. Yeah. Now, you leave the lining paper on the cake. That's very important, Alan, to keep it moist. Yeah. Then... Wrap in baking parchment or greaseproof paper, and then into greaseproof paper, or into tin foil rather. Okay. Now this is important, so you have a lovely. All the tape. tips for everyone yeah. here this morning. So you just work this around, and then you store it in a cool, dry place, and that's very important. Like with the plum pudding, don't put it where the temperature fluctuates. Okay. Are you with me? So in a press somewhere. Yes. Just put yeah. it up in a press somewhere a press, where there's. Perhaps not in the kitchen where the temperatures, you know, if you're baking oh, or cooking okay. is getting hot and cold. Where would you put it then? Now, under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's where a lot of people put their cakes. <laughs> <Was that> <laughs> the temperature doesn't fluctuate too much in the, in the bedroom, but it shouldn't. <laughs> okay, so put it in a press then, but where where your temperature shouldn't fluctuate? They might be fluctuating in the bedroom. <laughs> Now, you could be, in about two weeks' time, open that up and pour more whiskey over it. But to be honest, if you put the, a lot in like I did... You don't fine. need it. You don't need so it. that's fine until Christmas Day or Christmas, Christmas Eve if you want to... But, but now, about, about three or four days before Christmas, we're going to decorate it here. Oh, you're going to decorate it? Yeah. OK. OK. Are oh, you going to put the icing on it and the whole exactly. thing? Exactly, yes. Oh, now, OK. So, if anyone wants the recipe <coughs> on the Ireland AM website or mm -hmm. www.odlums.ie or you can send your name and address to Odlums at Ballymount, Dublin. Are you going to? Twelve. Are you going to make another one there? Yes. Now, if you've missed any of the details, as Catherine gave you all the details there, so you can go on and do all that. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring this home now and bake it at home. So that's for yourself. People, if they want, well, we might have two before Christmas. Might have here. Two before Christmas. We might just have it. But just to mention here, if people are a bit tired for time, you can mix your cake the night before and bake it the next, next day. day. Yeah. Okay. People Great. So, working. Catherine, thank you very much for that. My What's pleasure. next week? As part next of our week Christmas. we're doing some almond cookies. What's, what's that Christmas. got to do with Christmas? Almond is associated with Christmas. All right. And okay. cookies in the shape of oh, stars, stars and Christmas trees. trees. Okay.